French linen and doing the inside of a drawer with Louis Blue. So I wanted to go through each step in a video uh, just to sort of help you out and make you feel like you can do it on your own. It's very easy. First thing I do is get everything set up. I gather all my supplies uh, in one place. That way when I'm ready to go on to the next step, I can do that quickly. One of the great things about chalk paint is that it dries so quickly in between each, uh, each coat. So you don't, there's no waiting for 12 to 24 hours. You can do a coat, wait 15 or 20 minutes, feel it. If it's dry, go on and do your second coat. Uh, so, once I gather everything I need um, and kind of get set up, today I'm actually going to paint indoors, which is very easy to do with chalk paint because there isn't really a scent with the paint. Uh, so the first step is wiping down the piece you're going to do with sort of a damp cloth just to get any uh, dust or dirt that may be uh, in it. So I'm going to wipe down my whole piece, then I'm going to get painting. Once you've wiped your piece down, it's time to go. That's the great thing about chalk paint is there's no priming or sanding involved, so you get to go straight to the fun part. Uh, give the can a good shake and uh, just pop it open and start painting. There's no uh, you know, special instructions just like you would do any, uh, any piece. I recommend doing at least two coats. This piece will not need more than two because it's already got a, a latex base. If you have a piece of really dark natural wood and you're painting it old white or a lighter color, there's a chance you might have to uh, do more than th more than two coats of paint. It just, just depends on the piece. Uh, but in my experience, I found that most only need two coats. Once you've done your first coat, it's time to go on to the second. Uh, don't worry if your first uh, coat, you can still see some, some sort of streaks or brush marks. The second coat should completely go over very smoothly and create a solid look that you'll love. So, let's get started. This is the fun part. so that you can see what it looks like as I begin using the dark wax because a lot of people are intimidated by the dark wax because it goes on very dark at first but I'm going to show you how you can really use the clear wax in tandem to tone it down and make it to be just the shade that you want it. The first thing to know about using dark wax is that you always have to use clear first. So you'll put your layer of clear on and then the dark and then you can use 
another clear over it, another clear layer over it to tone it down and make it the shade that you want. So I'm going to start with just a little tiny bit of clear on the end of my brush. I would recommend working with just a small part uh, at a time because you want the clear wax to be on there and be sort of tacky when you uh, apply your dark wax. So I'm going to cover this whole area with clear uh, pretty quickly. I found that sort of the, the faster I do it and the less I think about it, uh, the more you know natural it ends up looking. So I've given this whole little square here a, a very, very light coating of clear. So now I'm going to come along with my dark wax brush and I have even less dark wax on there because you can always add more. So I'm going to start out and just kind of do a quick little rub in this section and as you can see it looks kind of scary at first because it really does sort of blob but I'm going to really work at my creases right here because that's where I kind of want the aged look to be and just sort of rub it in. You know, this is the time to feel real artistic with it. Just sort of let it flow and, and go on there until you've got kind of a, a good dark rub. Now I love, these are Annie Sloan's wax brushes and they really, for me, they're a lot easier than a regular paintbrush because of the way I can hold them like this with the, the round bristles and really push hard into the corners to kind of to make sure I get it in all the grooves that are on there. So after I've gotten a pretty uh, sufficient amount of dark wax on and I'm, I'm happy with that. Now let's say I got a big blob and I really, really, really didn't like it right there. All I would need to do is add a little clear back on my clear brush, wipe it on, and then you can either use, you know, just keep working it out with your brush or even use a cloth to wipe it off if you get way too much. So now I'm going to get this, uh, put some more clear on my clear brush and go back over it and just kind of rub it out and keep rubbing till I get the desired uh, darkness that I want. Um, it's really, really up to you. Some people don't like the way the dark looks, but on this particular piece and with the French linen, I really think it, it kind of makes the piece, it gives it a nice aged look. So I'm just going to keep going over it. Uh, basically, the, the clear does remove the dark. So I'll just keep going over it until I get the shade I like. So now I'm going to grab my cloth even and just sort of rub my cloth over some of the spots just to kind of mute it down a little bit more. Um, you know, this type of painting is not, it doesn't look like manufactured furniture. I mean, it is certainly a very hand-painted technique look, which, you know, each piece is different. Each section you do may look a little bit different than the others. So. After I waxed the piece, I let it dry for about 15 minutes, took a fine grit sandpaper and rubbed it down, and that's what creates the smooth uh, furniture finished feeling. So now that I've done that and let it dry for about 24 hours, I'm on to the fun part, which is using this new gilding wax that I bought. Um, this is really, uh, it's, it's not essential to the piece at all. I just wanted to give it a little bit of a decorative flair. So I'm gonna zoom in here in just a moment and show you how this works uh, up close. Just take the pot of gilding wax, dab a little tiny bit on any of your fingers, and just kind of rub. You can let it go uh, along the, the sides, along the bottom, just wherever you think uh, it would add a little, little touch. I think this kind of 
ties in with this piece and gives it a little bit of an old feel almost like it had more gold on it at some point but uh, some of it's been rubbed off over over the years so just kind of rub and a little tiny bit goes a long way I'm not sure how I'm ever gonna use this whole jar but uh, just kind of rub and, and go in your own uh, way that you like and that's it it's simple I hope this little video helped sort of take some of the guesswork out of using chalk paint. As you can see from the demonstration, it's very user friendly and a great way to, to start off the furniture painting. So if you have any questions, be sure to contact me and let me see the pieces that you do.